A brutal queen dominates them. Her excesses trigger a revolt. But violence still could consume the clan as the hyenas battle for their lives. One man witnesses the saga. Drawn into its drama, he achieves the unimaginable, persuading wild predators to accept him and revealing spotted hyenas as never before. This troubled clan finally lets me into their lives. I feel I've almost become one of them and can see the world through hyena eyes. He experiences a story of savagery and grace as a hyena clan fights for its life. A clan of skilled hunters gathers to give chase. These spotted hyenas know their turf and exactly how to find their prey. The clan roams the Charleston region of South Africa's Mala Mala Game Reserve. Their range is a harsh, unyielding landscape, dense with other predators. The Charleston clan answers to an adult female, Gork. In the spotted hyena's world, females control all aspects of life. As queen, Gork eats first. She outranks everyone, and she lets them know it. The other Charlestons endure their leader's wrath, and they must respond with submissiveness appropriate to their rank, or the clan's social order will collapse. At Gork's side is her lieutenant, Nikita. Nikita's in line to succeed the queen. She keeps her head down and takes the lead on the hunt. Nikita and the others work. Gork gorges, always eating more than any other clan member. Kim Walliter has ventured closer to Charleston clan than anyone has ever dared. After 10 years of tracking wildlife at Mala Mala, Kim sees this predator in a new light. People think hyenas are horrible, dirty, stupid, laughing, cowardly scavengers. None of these things are true. What is true is that spotted hyenas like the Charlestons aren't closely related to the dog, as many think, but to the mongoose. They hunt most of their own food and crave social contact with their clan much as wolves do with their pack. And by some measures of intelligence, they rank with primates. 
Hyenas are much more complex and interesting and individual than people realize. I learned this from the Charlestons because they're a small clan and each member stands out. But this small clan has problems. Over his years at Mala Mala, Kim has seen the clan shrink. Some spotted hyena clans run 80 strong. The Charlestons never have been that large. But one time, they did have about 20 members. Now, they number four. To learn why their numbers have dwindled, Kim decides to try to get as close as he can to the clan. He has to play by hyena rules and work the graveyard shift. And he faces an obstacle he can't control. Gork, the clan's queen. Gork's more aggressive than other hyenas are. Kim makes little progress, until an unexpected discovery. The clan has grown by two. Vital additions to the Charleston ranks, if they survive. Hyenas nurse their young, but also bring them meat. This cub is so excited by the prospect of a meal, it's lost track of the food. While the cubs are young and need the protection of the den, the clan will stay nearby. Nikita and another female, Tandi, are the new mothers. Each has a cub about the same age. Hyena litters are small, usually two cubs at most. At this age, a hyena's sex is hard to pinpoint. As the Charleston cubs mature, Clues to their gender will emerge from their behavior and size. If they're females, they'll grow bigger and stronger than males, and they'll dominate the clan. The hyenas meet nightly at the den to bond before the hunt. Because it's so small, the clan has only one adult male. Kim calls him Russian. Greeting the cubs, he's the first to show deference. Clan females and their cubs outrank Russian. They make sure he knows where he stands. Nikita's brought home fresh meat. She fends off the other female's cub so her own can eat. It's a valuable lesson. Once hyena cubs join their clan's hunting forays, they must compete for every bite. As the clan feeds, Kim notices someone's missing. Where's the queen? Where's Gore? She should be at the den with her clan. Gork doesn't come around the den much. It's probably because she hasn't got cubs. And as far as I know, she's never had cubs. This is really unusual for a hyena matriarch. If Kim's right and Gork is barren, something's gravely wrong here. In most spotted hyena clans, the matriarch bears cubs more frequently than other females. Gork takes a queen's share of food from the clan, 
but she isn't giving back by adding to the clan's ranks. Especially in a clan this small, every female should be bearing cubs. And there's another problem with gore. Spotted hyena matriarchs use aggression to remind clan members of their places. But Gork's violent outbursts seem out of control. In the years that I've known Gork, I've seen her really abuse other females, and especially the ones with cubs. Some of them have even left the clan. Not only is Gork violent, she attacks for no apparent reason. Her disruptions are destroying clan unity, putting the Charlestons at risk. The Charleston Hyena clan must protect its turf from incursions by other predators. Each evening, they go out on patrol, starting with a whoop that gathers the clan. The whoop is one of at least ten distinct calls spotted hyenas make. Each animal's whoop is unique, like a signature. While on patrol, clan members mark turf with a pungent paste from their scent glands. A single sniff may reveal the sex and even the individual identity of whoever left the mark. A strange scent has hackles up all around. The clan responds to the intrusion by marking again. The boundaries of their territory are vulnerable to invaders and need constant vigilance. The Charlestons maintain a territory about 45 kilometers square on the south side of Marla Marla Game Reserve. To the north, a larger rival hyena clan stakes its claim. Marla Marla's hyena clans face a common threat. Other than man, lions are hyena's most powerful enemies. They trample hyena's turf, steal their food, and kill hyenas whenever they can. In the constant struggle for territory and food, confrontations are inevitable. Especially now that the wet season has ended. During the dry season, predator and prey crowd the same sources to drink and to feed. Tonight, hungry and on edge, clan members head out, but they sense they are not alone. lions bring down a powerful buffalo with terrifying ease. The clan keeps their distance. They're weakened and brutalized by their own leader. 
In a run-in with this pride, the clan would never survive. Clan members head off to hunt on their own. Nikita and Russian bring down an impala. But as usual, Gork demands more than her share of the meat. Gork is shoving everyone aside. Female hyenas can weigh 90 kilos, and a hyena can eat a third of its weight at a sitting. That means Gork can put away about 30 kilos of meat. Gork's reign as hyena queen continues to torment her clan. At dawn, the others are still on the prowl, again reduced to scavenging. They find the buffalo carcass, which the lions left all but clean. Gorks away. This gives Kim a chance to edge closer. Nikita and Russian gnaw what they can. <laughs> Hyena's jaws can crunch down at a force of 70 kilos per square centimetre, enough to crack the hardest bone. Their digestive juices help them extract every bit of nutrition from even the oldest skeleton. This leaves hyena dung white and powdery. Yeah, here's uh, some old dung. This stuff is just so full of bone. It's, it's solid calcium and it's really hard. I mean, you can write your name with it. It's, it's almost like, like chalk. But the clan is under stress from hunger and competition. To survive and keep their cubs alive, these hyenas need to be eating more than bones. Nikita and Russian see vultures descending, a clue they use to target other predators' kills. In this case, a leopard's. The big cat wants it back. <laughs> Gork arrives late, looking for her share. She grabs the whole thing. For the others, it could be another day of hunger. Nikita needs to keep her strength up. She settles in to suckle her little one, Nibbles. Among predators, hyenas are unusually devoted mothers. Nikita's milk is richer than any land mammals. Her cubs will suckle for about 14 months, nine times longer than a kitten or puppy. As the cubs grow, they demand ever more food. This puts an added pressure on the clan. Nikita and Tandi must hunt more often. Kim senses an opportunity. If the cubs' mothers were here, he might not try this. The den runs deep inside the rocks, where the cubs are not alone. The intruder instantly attracts attention. The cubs are struggling between fear and curiosity, but they just have to investigate anything new in their territory. Suddenly, Kim realizes he's between a mother predator and her cub. This situation is tense. I don't know how Nikita will react with her cubs being so close to me. But she seems to relax and settle down.
Kim moves closer than ever to the clan. It seems the cubs want to know where the stranger fits on their social ladder. Spotted hyena cubs can learn to recognize nearly 100 individual clan members and where they rank. While the cubs eyeball Kim, he's trying to figure them out. This character acts like a female, bold and confident, but Kim can't be sure. Hyena anatomy is misleading. This animal is not male. Before birth, female hyenas develop reproductive organs that look like a male's, but don't work that way. In fact, females give birth through this mock penis. The reason for this unusual physiology remains a mystery. The dry season drags on. Gork continues to torment Charleston clan. <laughs> Gork always seems so tense and she's either looking over her shoulder or going after someone. The only one she hasn't alienated is Nikita. Clearly something has to give. Suddenly, Gork lunges at Nikita. Then, she denies Nikita access to the kill. The surprise attack reduces Gork's lieutenant to groveling. Head down, ears back, emitting a plaintive squeal. Things are spiralling out of control for the clan. The cubs are getting even bigger, demanding more food. Except for Gork, the adults are constantly hungry. Even worse, lions are treading all over the clan's turf. Night after night, the hyenas and the cats roar into the darkness. Lion scent is everywhere, putting the hyenas even more on edge. And at every turn, Gork snaps at them. Gork has become impossible to live with, and she's got her clan always at odds with each other. It's a really bad situation for such social predators. They're headed for disaster. A night later, Kim's fear comes to pass, when the Charlestons break into a ferocious battle. The clan is at war with itself. Fighting maims Gork. The clan has savaged its queen, all but amputating her left hind foot. They stopped just short of killing her, and as hard as that was, the coup did seem necessary. But now, Gork could die, right when her tiny clan needs every member. The death of the matriarch could put the Charlestons in even more peril. Days later, the hyenas are still recovering from the fight. The wounded Gork confronts her clan, but without her old bluster. Mm -hmm. 
the clan has deposed its queen. After really hating Gork in her dominant state, now I feel sorry for her. A coup like this is a rare event among hyenas, and I'm not sure where it leaves Charleston. Nikita is next in line to rule. She may have to earn the clan's respect. Nikita takes her first step as leader when she gives a summoning whoop. But the others respond by coming to her side. A new clan order emerges after they hunt. Gork wants to feed. But the others won't let her in. <laughs> then Nikita bites down, sealing Gork's fate and her own. Now it's clear, Nikita is the new queen of the Charlestons. With Nikita in charge, the clan begins to work together. They're becoming a cohesive unit. but nothing is guaranteed. The regime change might make a difference to outsiders. A nomadic male named Snare has been coming around. He takes his name from the striking scar on his neck, left by a trap he managed to escape. Snare wants in with the clan. He senses Nikita might be ready to mate. He's nervous. She's not impressed. Rebuffed, Snare roots out a meal. A carcass, the clan hid in the water. But Russian, the clan's male, brushes the interloper off. Snare will just have to keep trying. Now that Nikita has established herself as queen, the clan rewards Kim's months of patience. He finds himself with access to them far more intimate and startling than he ever expected. I've been making films for the last 17 years, all in the wild, and never have I got this close to, to a wild animal. When Scratchy came to me like this and accepted my scratching the way she did, I actually didn't know how to react to it. She had no fear, really, and never knew anything of me, where I'd come from, what I was about, but she took on the trust, and, and I took on her trust and just developed this great relationship. The cub invites contact, crossing an ancient barrier between species, and providing Kim with a quirky insight into hyena physiology. I was very surprised when Scratchy was licking me and I found that her, her tongue was really rough like a cat's tongue, and not smooth like a dog's tongue. Few humans have dared attain such intimacy with hyenas in the wild. Kim can't count on the den much longer as a place to connect with the clan. The cubs nearly equal their mothers in size and can join them on patrol. Soon, they will start ranging out on their own. Midday is usually the safest for such forays. It's too hot to do much. While the adults sleep, a pan serves as a wading pool. Soon, playtime will end, and the cubs will have to live by adult rules and confront adult risks. Especially after dark, when the clan hunts. Tonight, as they start to patrol, the hyenas stop short. 
they hear a turf battle, a reminder of what's at stake in Mala Mala. The clan that lives to the north is going to war. The big cats dislike water, but not enough to keep them away from a meal. Once the lions leave, the hyenas sneak in. They feed in silence. One yip could bring the lions back. With Nikita in the lead, the clan seems more secure. But a small clan is still a small clan, and no match for lions. All the hyenas can do is dodge their enemies and focus their energies. They must add cubs to the clan. When Nikita picks a partner, it's a surprise to Kim. The new matriarch mates, no, not with longtime companion Russian, to father her next cubs, Nikita picks the outsider, Snare. I was stunned. I thought Russian was Nikita's guy. This may be Nikita's way of cementing her control, mating with an outsider and bringing new blood into the clan. If Snare has succeeded, in about 14 weeks, Nikita will bear cubs. Pride of Eight pursues Nikita's clan. With Kim on their heels, worried about the Charlestons, especially the youngsters. Seriously, Ben. Next morning, when the hyena's backtrack passed Kim, he counts noses. Scratches accounted for. Nikita, too. But Nikita's cub, Nibbles, has vanished. A week goes by. Still no nibbles. Kim fears lions might have got him. He's seen the big cats kill hyena cubs. Male lions have this passionate hatred for hyenas, and especially hyena cubs. They'll actually hunt them down and do them in and just leave the little ones there to, to rot or to be left to the vulture. The clan may have suffered a loss, but its members still have to hunt. And tonight, the hyenas come upon a vulnerable enemy, a lioness alone on a kill. As if seeking vengeance, they take her on. Hyenas win the uneven face-off, but then instinct propels the clan to press on, taking the fight to their ancient foe. It's a risk for hyenas to confront even a single lioness, but they're determined to put pressure on her to keep her out of their territory. They encircle the cat. 
The hyenas have the numbers, but a lion that has no way out is very dangerous. Russian and Nikita try a flanking attack. Even Gork joins the fight. The clan has sent the Lion Pride a bold message. but at a bitter price. Nikita's in a really bad way. The lioness has, has bitten her in the rump and uh, the situation looks dire. She could have really bad internal injuries and even splintered bones. Many hyenas die from lion attacks and the wounded matriarch could be one of them. If Nikita dies, the clan could self-destruct. In the morning, Kim Walliter finds Nikita, the wounded matriarch of Charleston hyena clan. Things look grim for Nikita, and her cub, Nibbles, is missing. It's a dark day for the clan. With her injuries, Nikita has little choice but to lay low. After a few days, she rallies. Considering how badly she was hurt, I'm amazed how quickly Nikita recovered from this lion attack and the way she could just get up and get back on the road again with the clan. With Nikita in charge, the clan lets Kim get even closer. He spends days patrolling with the hyenas. I feel really safe walking with these guys. They are my eyes and ears and, and my nose and it's, it's amazing what they're picking up. And there's, there's signs of things which I would never really know and I wouldn't know that they're seeing unless I was that close and intimate with them and I can, you know, when they stop and sniff at something I'll investigate it and see that the lions have been here or something else has been here. I can, can trust their reactions and they're going to tell me far quicker than I am where there's lions or leopards around. Yeah, you are with a, a real predator who has the potential to, to kill anything almost, and even me. You won't ever get this feeling walking with your dogs or whatever. You've got to walk with hyenas to understand it. Finally, after all these months, Kim gets a chance to do what he's wanted, to use his hard-earned intimacy to follow Nikita on a hunt from beginning to end. He's hoping to see the Charleston's function as a hyena clan should. He starts this chase behind the wheel. The clan maintains a brisk pace. I'm always amazed at the stamina they have. They can just run all night. And this clan has actually learned where the Impala hang out. They'll go straight from herd to herd, like they've got a mental map of their territory. It's another example of hyena intelligence.
With Kim shadowing, the hyenas pick up speed. <laughs> and pull down an impala. Kim seizes his chance. And soon, he's in the thick of the action. Nikita's a dominant female and she'll control what, what goes on here. That's Gork. That's Gork making all the noise. They're just not letting her in. But they're letting me in here, which is amazing that they've allowed me right in with the clan. I've become a clan member with these guys, there's no doubt. They're not hassled with me, but Gork, there's no way they're going to let her in here. Hopefully I'll always have better rank than Gork, and even if not, I'm just a low-ranking male. And... <laughs> to some it might look like a, a real death wish, but quite honestly I feel quite safe. I mean, here I'm getting... the cubs are right on top of me here. Against all odds, a lowly two-legger has found a place with this predatory family. My experience with the clan is taking me far beyond anything I ever imagined and is really showing me what hyenas are in their true colours. This little clan is bouncing back from a tough year, working through their problems and growing in their ranks. The hyena's old leader, Gork, assumes a new role at the bottom rung of the clan ladder. Snare, the nomad, finds his spot in the clan too. He's fathered the clan's next generation. Nikita has two new cubs. They're Charleston clan's future. A future bound to be full of conflict. <laughs> the Charlestons will always face battles for territory and competition for food. They'll always work hard to rule this patch of Africa, led by their hyena queen.